Hello, everyone. Uh, absolutely excited to be on this 100 Veterans Day uh, conversation. I'm Shyan. Uh, with me is Jikyasa. Hi. And we're speaking live from Delhi, India. It's 6.30 p.m. today. Uh, so the question we're exploring today is, what would a world uh, of self-aware individuals look like uh, where everyone has a voice? Um, it's a question we're going to unpack today, and uh, we're probably going to leave you with no answers, but hopefully more questions. Uh, first off, I want to share a big thank you to 100 for the amazing platform they've created uh, and the fact that they're throwing light on amazing education innovations from across the world and giving them a platform to share their voice with the world. Uh, interestingly, voice is also something that we're going to talk about today, in particular, student voice. Uh, but before we go into that, I want to share a quick introduction. Uh, so my name is Shayan Roy Chaudhary. I work as the innovation manager at Teach for India. And I spearhead Teach for India's national incubator for entrepreneurs who are working to build organizations in the education space. Uh, this incubator is called Innovate Ed. Uh, the reason Innovate Ed exists is simple. Uh, we need more and more innovations across different aspects of the education system uh, to create change. And we also know that creating something new is a, an extremely difficult process. Uh, so what Innovator tries to do is to enable these entrepreneurs to build organizations through a variety of support uh, that we offer uh, to these entrepreneurs. Uh, a quick uh, sort of background on Innovator and what makes it unique. Uh, so I think one thing that really stands out, uh, three things actually that really stand out for me. Uh, the first is that it is education focused. So while a lot of incubators tend to have entrepreneurs working across different sectors and they tend to be sector agnostic. Innovative focuses solely on education and which enables it to change the kind of conversation we have in our incubation program where people have a high degree of alignment and have the same vocabulary uh, through which they can uh, talk about the same issues. Uh, the second is the fact that Innovated supports Teach for India fellows who want to become entrepreneurs which means that they automatically come with the background of pedagogy of having taught in a low income classroom and they really understand uh, what it is to work with a child and they've worked on the front lines of the problem and they're what we call teacherpreneurs. Uh, so that's an added sort of um, benefit that we have in working with entrepreneurs here. Uh, the third thing is that we have that innovated as part of a global community. Um, Teach for India itself is uh, part of the larger Teach for All network. Uh, and we have access to about more than 600 entrepreneurs who are working in education across different parts of the world in over 50 countries. Uh, so the, the power of the larger network, I think, is the other thing that makes it unique. Uh, so quick introduction to Jigyasa. Uh, she is the founder and CEO of Slam Out Loud, or one of the organizations that Innovate Ed is incubating. Uh, and Slam Out Loud works on student voice through the transformational power of the arts. I'll let Jigyasa talk a little bit about what they do. Yeah, thank you, Shayan. Um, you already know my name is Jigyasa. Uh, I quickly jump into things. Um, so we continue to live in a community where our dreams for children from low-income communities are restricted to, at best, the security of employment or success in ac academics. Um, and yet we believe that something as fundamental as having your voice being able to express oneself shouldn't be limited to a privileged class um, because of the lack of engaging opportunities that empower children with agency and voice about 444 million children in india are disempowered to break the cycle of negative outcomes um, slam out loud works at the intersection of arts education and leadership development with a vision that every individual will have a voice that empowers them to change lives, their own lives and lives of people around them. Uh, we partner with schools and community organizations that serve at-risk communities and impart art-based learning in safe spaces that we create. Um, we believe that the transformational power of the arts um, will enable children to build what we call the 21st century skills of communication, critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration build in them the social emotional learning that they need to succeed in life and also build in them the sense of having their own voice 
uh, we've partnered with the government and with different community-based organizations and NGOs, and we've worked with around um, 5,000 children and 40 artists in India. Um, so some of the things um, that we focus on in Slam Out Loud um, is that the art intervention is long-term. Uh, we believe that when skilled artists work with children for over some years, the children will be able to develop the skill in the art form, but also develop leadership in the process. Um, we do this through our model of engaging artists with children through what we call the Gigi Visha Fellowship for a year, in which artists join the program and work with children through different mediums of storytelling, poetry, uh, theater, and even visual arts from this year on um, to build these skills in children. Uh, we've done this in Delhi and are excited to launch the fellowship this year in the conflict area of Kashmir. Um, and we feel that arts as a medium um, will have really strong power to unite people, to bring people together, to bring um, rural arts to the focus in, a, in an area like Kashmir. Um, the second thing that we focus on is to have deeply rooted community context and leverage support within the community. So we create very little infrastructure ourselves. Um, we look at how we can engage the community directly in the work that we do. Um, and the third thing that we do is use the arts for expression as well as advocacy. Um, while we feel that children learn a lot from this art form, um, but the artists who join the program also begin to envision how their art can be used for social change um, and for driving advocacy about some causes that they deeply believe in. I think this on-ground experience um, of uh, seeing what most of this country lives and feels like um, engages artists in a way um, which propels them to use their own art form for advocacy. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, oh, it's a thanks. long introduction. Thanks, Jikyasa. Uh, so given that 100th theme of the month is student voice, so that's that's an, that's a topic we wanted to deep dive on and unpack. Uh, so I'll share a few questions with Jigyasa because she works directly with student voice and we'll have her share her thoughts on them. Uh, so Jigyasa, my first question to you was, uh, what is your definition of student voice? Yeah. How do you look at it? Um, yeah. So I think the worst thing to do with student voice would be to define it. Um, yet I will just uh, like to cite an incident or I would like to cite um, an incident which I would like to see more and more. Um, and that is about a child being able to raise their hand in the class without being afraid of whether their answer would be wrong, uh, without knowing whether what I'm about to say is going to be acceptable, is, uh, um, is into the buckets of rights or wrongs, the children feel um, the innate freedom to express what they really, really feel. Um, I feel that children getting a chance to become themselves and expressing that um, would be something I envision as student voice, although I'll be uh, afraid I don't think I can define it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, uh, the second question I had for you is uh, you choose to work with student voice using arts as a medium. So why arts? Yeah. Um, so I think I have two answers for this. Um, one answer is very, very personal. The second answer is very scientific. I'll go with the second answer first, the scientific one. So over years, research in a lot of communities, in a lot of contexts, um, especially in the US um, and other developed nations in the world, have shown a direct correlation between how children have performed, uh, both academically and in life, and the relationship with an art form that they practiced. Um, in US, there's a study which shows that uh, children who practice arts for continuous four years surpassed scores in their SAT um, compared to their other counterparts. And um, for me, although the academic part is the one which comes later, um, I believe there's a lot of scientific evidence which proves that arts do build social emotional learning. Um, however, uh, my personal reason is um, that when I talk about that child who is not afraid to raise their hand in the class, um, I think about um, a child who's not afraid. Um, and uh, I think about how arts provide um, platforms for expression which do not need to have a right or wrong answer. Right. Um, arts have no rules. 
Um, I especially remember introducing spoken word poetry into my class um, as a Teach for India fellow because um, I felt that the kids had a lot of prejudice towards other art forms, which supposedly had some rules. Um, and spoken word poetry was completely new to them. Uh, they thought it has no rules, and I think they excelled at it. They thrived in that class, um, and hence arts. Awesome. Uh, so I think the the logical next question for me uh, was which forms of art, uh, what are the different art forms that you're working with in order to build student voice? Yeah. Um, so we work with spoken word poetry um, and poetry writing. Uh, we just try to um, raise the form up from paper and let it travel all over the world. Uh, the second art form that we work with is storytelling um, in different forms. Um, the third art form that we work with um, is theater. Uh, and um, in a very interesting program that we do with theater, we're working on gender sensitization, um, where uh, the girls are learning to be more confident um, and um, more in control, and the boys are learning how to control their body. So um, that's theater. And the, the art form we're introducing this year is visual arts. Uh, so we'll be looking at sketching, painting, um, graffiti, all kind of visual arts. Awesome. Thank you. Uh... So I think the, the last and fourth question that I had for you was, can you share some stories of change that you've seen in your children, in the students that you work with through this intervention? Yeah, uh, many, um, but I think I will uh, share a story which is very, very close to my heart. Um, it's Pooja's story. Um, and uh, most of my friends know about this story uh, because I keep talking about Pooja all the time. Um, so. So Pooja's journey um, started with my journey as a Teach for India fellow. Um, and she was a student in my class who entered a class of uh, three, four years of Teach for India intervention where all the other kids were very confident, could speak some English. Um, and she came from West Bengal, um, extremely nervous child, extremely shy. Um, and uh, disclaimer, I don't think being shy. Shy is a bad thing. However, she wanted to express and could not find any medium for it. So one day when I said, um, you know, here yeah, slam out loud and um, you can write poetry and children asked me, um, Bibi, what language do we write in? And I said, write in Hindi, English, Urdu, Nepali also, as long as you can explain um, later, write the write your poems in any art form. And we went through some workshops and um, learned a bit of structures and um, then the kids started writing. So Pooja, um, starting writing on an everyday basis. So every single day, Pooja would come to me with one poem, two poems, three poems. And um, um, in a couple of months, Pooja started getting recognition um, in the class as a poet uh, and as a very um, you know, good, successful poet. Um, I think that turned things around for Pooja in the sense that she started accompanying me to different workshops of workshops of slam out loud that we uh, kept having across Delhi um, and she started performing um, soon other children were going to her to get feedback on their performances on their poems um, and Pooja developed this identity for herself out of nowhere um, at the end of my fellowship and, and at the end of my association with Pooja um, and I continue to work with a couple of kids even now and Pooja is one of them um, so at the end of two years, Pooja had replicated her success as a poet uh, into her success in the classroom. She started asking more questions. She became much more confident. Um, at the end of the year, even academically, she succeeded. Uh, she stood second in my class of 50 children uh, who had um, an intervention from the last three, four years. So she stood second. Uh, and now Pooja is a girl uh, who travels alone in Delhi. She takes the metro. She calls me when she needs help. Uh, she talks to a stranger to sometimes take their phone and call me um, and ask for help. Um, and I think hers has been a story of transformation. Uh, I know that uh, poems and poetry uh, has completely changed her life. It's it's very, very different. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Uh, do you want to share a snippet from your work or any piece, something that one of your students wrote Anything that we can uh, leave people with? Mm, so most of my poems are in Urdu, which 
um, you might have to translate. Um, I'll speak a couplet and then, um, yeah, but I will try my best to translate. Um, so the couplet is, Darya barish mein kyun ruka dekhe? Aina rakh ke baat karte hain, shaks koi to bazuban dekhe. Dhund ko cheer kar, mere ghar pahunche, dhoop ka aisa hausla dekhe. या तो वो मुश्किलें सहल कर दे या फिर हम दूसरा खुदा देखें सो सो दिस दिस इज अ पोम अबाउट अबाउट सम वाइल एंड इट टॉक्स अबाउट वाई शुड आई सी अ रिवर नॉट फ्लोइंग व्हेन इट्स रेनिंग एंड यू नो आई वुड लाइक टू सी द ऑडेसिटी ऑफ सनलाइट टू Ear through the fog and you know get to my home to reach me. And the last is that um, either if there is a God, um, He should solve issues, or I should look for another one. Wow! Yeah. Amazing. Uh, beautiful words to leave us with. Uh, thank you, Digasa. Um, yeah, a big thank you to everyone who's listening to us right now. Uh, I think this hundred community is wonderful. I love. being an ambassador and connecting with different ambassadors from all across the world um, and i hope this was useful relevant uh, valuable and once again congratulations to 100 for creating this platform for allowing people to share their voices um, yeah thank you and see you all soon take care sir yeah thank you thank you everyone who tuned in to listen and uh, yeah very very grateful for the opportunity awesome like our facebook pages uh, yeah this <laughs> Uh, like us on uh, so slam out loud and innovate ted ed um look out for our pages on youtube on instagram on linkedin twitter facebook everything um and uh, do send us a shout out thank you thank you so much bye